Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we are going to discuss Jot Secured Authorization Requests, or RFC 9101, uh, which kind of aims at improving the security of your OAuth application. Now, uh, let's make an example to, to properly understand this. So this application here is diagrams.net. This application is storing the file I am, you're currently seeing and I'm currently editing in my Google Drive. So that means this is like a client and this client needs to get like an access token to access like the Google Drive API. And normally with a normal flow, because yeah, I am involved, I'm like a person, so we're doing the authorization called grant. Uh, you log in with your Google account and then what happens is you make a request or like a redirect to the authorization server and you send like all these things like to what redirect URL you want to be sent back, um, what response type you want, your client ID, scopes and maybe also like pixie values and so on. And the issue with that is that all of this is passed in the URL. So it's like passed in the front channel and uh, it's not signed so technically speaking if anyone has like access to this bar it could be manipulated and uh, yeah it's just not like what we want to have so we want to improve like the communication here and also someone could just monitor all of this so this is not so nice and that's why there's this new rfc which talks about jot secured authorization requests and the uh, idea here is very very simple so the idea is instead of putting all of this stuff like the redirect URIs, state and response type and, and client IDs and all of that just as so to say plain text in the URL as query parameters what you do is you take all of these things you put them in a JSON web token uh, in a JSON web signature token uh, to be precise and then you sign that and this is then the thing that you send to the authorization server. And now the nice thing is that this is now integrity protected. So no one can actually like mess with your, like with the content in here because it's signed and the authorization server would immediately notice. Now, one more thing, uh, the spec even allows you to also encrypt. So technically speaking, if you're like in a super high security environment, you would say, okay, I'm going to take the parameters, I'm going to sign them and then I'm going to wrap my JSON Web Signature token inside of a JSON Web Encryption token so that not only is my uh, stuff integrity protected, um, but also it's confidential. Okay, so you basically put this thing here inside as the ciphertext. So take this string and uh, encrypt it. So that would also work. And uh, this is like more secure because obviously you don't have to pass like all this data through like the browser here uh, you pass it through the browser but your data is like uh, integrity protected and, and authenticated and you might even encrypt it and this is basically what this uh, whole thing here provides so instead of having these parameters you have the you only pass like the client id the client id is also uh, added as claims in here and both both of them have to match and if they don't match uh, the server should return an error or has to return an error and then you have this request parameter and this actually contains your json web token and you might have a nested jot so json web encryption that token that contains a json web signature token so yeah and there's another way of doing this because the situation you have right now is that this url here might get like very long because if you have a jot like then you have the signature at the end and all of this gets like very very long and some browsers might not support it so what they also offer or propose in here is that you pass a reference to this object so instead of just taking the parameters inside a jot and signing it and optionally encrypting it you could just make a request to some backend and send like these things along, like the parameters along. The backend would then s sign it or encrypt it uh, and store it like somewhere. Uh, and then you get back like a URI. And then in your authorization request, 
all you do is you pass like a URI in the URL bar and then the authorization server just uh, makes a request to the URI and fetches like the thing. So this is like sort of like the pass by reference model. Yeah, so first you create the authorization request, you store it somewhere. By the way, this could be like this diagrams.net backend server if there is any, uh, or it could be like some third party application, or it could even be the authorization server itself. So for that, there's a dedicated spec for that. But this spec here says, okay, you just post this stuff somewhere, you create like some authorization request, uh, and then you sign it and you might even encrypt it if you want. And then the authorization server, then you do like the redirect. Um, the authorization server sees, ah, okay, there's like a URL. So I'm going to reach out to the server and fetch it and then verify like the, the signature or even decrypt and then verify the signature. Yeah, so that's what these numbers are for. So first you create this, then you redirect then this URL is sent to the authorization server and then the authorization server fetches this information and then it displays like this confirmation dialogue. So this is what uh, this spec provides. Now naturally it would of course make sense to have the authorization server do it. As I said there's a separate spec for this which we're going to talk about as well because otherwise you have to build this custom backend solution. Um, it makes sense to, to kind of have the authorization server do the work. Um, yeah, it's just simpler. Cool, yeah, so that's it pretty much with uh, JOT secured authorization requests. So the bottom line is instead of passing all these parameters directly in the browser bar in the front channel of, the, uh, of, of your application, like what you do is you take these things and you sign it and then still pass them in the URL bar or you pass them by reference. So you basically send this data somewhere and then the authorization server fetches the authorization request and then uh, decrypts and validates or just validates the request. Cool, so that's it pretty much. I just wanted to mention like one more thing. Be in mind, of course you could sign and then encrypt, but as you can already see, this is making things really complicated, yeah. So you first have to take that stuff, put it in here, create the signature, and then take this thing, the string that you get out of it, and encrypt it here in a JSON Web Encryption uh, token. Now, of course, you can do that. Um, however, just signing, like the parameters, would already be progress over the current status quo, right? Because right now, uh, they are not uh, integrity protected at all. Cool. So that's it pretty much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.